We had this initial wave of media coverage of stereotyping and labelling. They don't belong with us, they're not part of us. That's what fear-mongering does. The coverage that they have portrayed has consistently and repeatedly focused on African immigrants more broadly as being the other. Being presented, you know, calling them packs, gangs, comparisons that have uh, connotations with the animals. Crime stories have always sold papers. I would question their concern for the people that they're reporting about. Oh, no! Hey, I guess my thing. This is crazy. Why they call me Shaggy? <laughs> if I give it away, then it just takes the joy out of people. I want to keep it mysterious, you know? <laughs> My name is Majok Nong, also known as Shaggy. I've been in Australia for 15 years, been involved in footy for nine to seven years, both playing and mentoring. Our story has usually been told from outside, you know, looking in. Um, so this time, taking it through my world, we had to sit down with Catherine from Monash University. She's a criminologist who has been writing a lot of report regarding the media patrol on my community. She's got a lot of cool facts we under here, but please stay tuned. <laughs> The report that we published at the end of last year was based on some research that we did um, with South Sudanese young people and we were talking to them about the effects of the recent um, media coverage following the Moomba 2016 riots. According to us, um, our definitions, it wasn't a riot. It wasn't organised, it wasn't targeted against a certain group of people or a certain event. Then the media coverage that followed that and then the effect that that coverage has had on their feelings of belonging and inclusion in Victoria. And so a lot of the coverage then was talking about the presence of African gangs, the violent nature of Africans sort of more broadly. The things that really came clear to us when we were analysing some of the newspaper coverage was the way that stories involving an alleged South Sudanese offender, the way that they were conveyed. So within the article, if it was a South Sudanese or African, more broadly, offender, usually in the third or fourth word of the article was something about skin colour or perceived country of birth. Whereas offences that focused on perhaps a white Australian, race either wasn't mentioned, or if it was, it was kind of deep down towards the end of the story. The media has a lot to, um, to account for. They are consistently saying, hey, these guys don't fit in with us. When most of the general population get their news from the mainstream media, of course they're going to believe what they hear. It hurts a lot, you know, like, my younger brother, my younger sister, actually were born in Australia. Yeah. And at this time that we just come home frustrated, and, like, just full of rage and whatnot. And I'm like, I guess I'm Australian, right? I'm like, yeah, technically you are, but unfortunately it's a society run you don't accept. And that's, and that's a, a very worrying sign. One of our leading figures within our community had a creative response to sensationalist media coverage. I went and had a chat with him. Uh, practice law of my office here, it's in the Footscray here, I'm a member of the South Sudanese community. The, the South Sudanese communities are highly concentrated in the West. Here, Footscray, down to Geelong, the migrant communities are looking for more affordable housing. So Melbourne invites that. On the 25th of August, I'll be 15 years now in Australia. Gee, two burger right there. <laughs> <laughs> young people were being demonized and the whole community was being treated as if it's, this is a community full of gangs and all that, that people committing crime, left, right and center. And I said, this has to stop. You know, I tweeted and I said, instead of my name, you know, I'm going to put a member of the African gangs and, yeah, and you know, really and, and it, it did. Within 10 hours, it was trending worldwide. It was the number one trend in Australia on the social media. Yeah. They told the stories of the community by the community as we saw them and as we know them. But they were not stories being collated by the media or yeah. other people outside the community. No, it's their actual community members yeah. turning up and saying, this is what I do on a day-to-day basis. Yeah. That's what fear mongering does. It really removes the victim from the from from the conversation, and it drives a wedge between people, yeah. and it makes members of the, the community to be um, to be ostracized, to be excluded from yeah. the community, and all that. I had to do something. Someone someone had to had to respond, setting a bad image of um, Sudanese people. Where in fact there are there are a lot of great Sudanese people who are doing great things. <coughs> We're not as bad as you think we are. 
Let us live while you're making our life hard. We're not as bad as you paint us, not at all. Some of us are bad, but not as dangerous as you think. I think our intentions should never be towards changing anyone's mind. For somebody to change their mind, it's up to them. It's if they want to, to learn more about the community. But what we should be focusing on is helping our community stand on its feet. In terms of the involvement from the community, yeah. we, we believe in itself that AFL has a big role to play. Definitely. It's the number one sport in this state. Yeah. And AFL has done some amazing work. Our young people have the attributes to excel uh, uh, the AFL and make uh, a good living for themselves. I think it's, you know, it's uh, AFL is the future for our young people. Trying to refugee, a proud refugee. I pay my dues what you talk about. I heard a quote once that said, you know, if your kid plays sport, your kid will learn to be disciplined, your kid will learn to do things in time, your kid will learn to have sense of compassion and also have an understanding within your surrounding. There's a mindset where you have to go to school to be successful. Some people are not made for school yeah. and sports sport kind of like... Um, teaches them about life in general. Yeah. I'll show you my uh, playlist if I can find it. I listen to this probably to this track mostly every time before my my game. Like it's like don't worry, be happy. It's just it's a great concept to always have in the back of your head. You know, there's so there's so much thing that we can control in life, but sometimes we we get caught up trying to control everything within our surrounding rather than just focus on what we can control ourselves. Um, so it, it kind of it gives you that reminder, like especially when I'm about to play the game, I'm like. Don't go do out there and do what you can't do. Like stick to what you do best and do that and bring that to the table and you'll make a greater contribution. Inside, Ishi, come on. Let's go. Oh, come on, I'll take you a quick tour of the back there before we come back here. Oh, you are my sister. Junior. Junior Ishi. I mean, Junior Bianca, wave. That's Junior Bianca, the mother, three nephew. No, nephew, niece, niece, nephew, niece. Been here for. 11 years. Same house? Thanks, same house. Since So this is my second house moving, once I moved to Australia. This is the second house we've got in here, so... And yeah, it's been home ever since. Yeah, not pretty good home. A lot of, uh, full of a lot of value, a lot of, um, I don't know, find my feet in this home, my sense of belonging. And yeah, this is, I wouldn't trade it for the world. This is the best. I moved out and always moved back in here. Join me. And uh, this is my beautiful mother. That's her name is Nyanut. That's Joseph's mom. That's the photo you Yeah, it was done through AFL Victoria um, to celebrate the multicultural day and uh, the diversity that, um, that exists in Melbourne, especially through the, the, the footy community. So, so this is pretty much just describe who I am, my full names, my tribe heritage, which is Tweet Miyari, and where I located. Shout out to Xavier Malone for purchasing this. And, and yeah. This is a small family, but uh, when we came here, we became more bigger and bigger because uh, of the wall in our country back home. We came here with our kids, so we thank God, we thank Australia. People said in Australia here, if you want a better life, you will get it. If you want a bad life, you will get it. A few years ago, we've been in a bad mood because of the kids and we are parents, we're not, we're not happy. Uh, for situation is, is going on now from our kids, but this boy, I'm really happy. One, the what he he doing at home and the what he doing outside is gives us up to to look more good future. Me and Joseph Lucky been a parent that support us. 2011, I got involved with the footy and it's been a great journey. Has not looked back from it. It's something that I, you know, wish that I picked up when I first came to Australia. Um, unfortunately, I picked it up six years, six years down the track, but the sport that opens the door for me in terms of like, you know, finding my passion within the community, working with the young people, and, and just give me a sense of pride and, and sense of belong, belonging within the community, so. Today, the official Star Football Club, we're here with the Lugunti squads and Jim Sun squads. Both of um, squads I've been involved in heavily the last couple of years, particularly um, the gym size squads, which um, I am assistant coach for. Do what you do for you. Obviously, you've got some type of talent, so. The gym size squads are purely multicultural background. Players come from different countries. You've got Sudan, Lebanese, Egypt. So it's very diverse groups, young groups. Yeah, so. Time to make 
make a change, big This program not just they don't just we don't just focus about you know you know the talent side of it, we're also focus about you know making you and building you as a person. It's what we ask you, that's why you're here, boys. Your talent. You know, teaching you the life skills, and so we go, we, we talk to, you know, we bring people in that will talk about their career pathway and all these things. So, um, there's a lot of benefit that comes with this program. I represent the immigrants with equivalent to the kings and queens with the filaments so intelligence when the killing them when it rings the poor. Without this type of program, obviously, it's a high risk of, you know, young people end up doing things they're not supposed to be doing. So this program, it gives them a purpose and it gives them something to, to call theirs and make their own story out of it. I'm the voice of many that kept quiet, minorities and etc. So you. Do you intend to be racist and hateful? We might come from a background that gave us a hope of Australia or the next place that we're seeking refuge in to be lavish and to be this and, and to have aid for us fully. But when you come from that way, you need a creative path to express what you just brought. You need a creative pathway to express what you were expecting and what you saw. Sports, music, performing, that same adrenaline is the built up of the struggle, built up of the, 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 the size that people didn't see. So built up in that to be released in the world stage or on a stage where you're able to project. At the end of the day, is like there's certain issues we're facing. So when I see such thing, such as my community going through it, and I can use my music, I can become the voice for them. My Jack Bo, that's someone I look up to. He's someone that came from my background and he's shown a great example as to how can we inspire to be greater than our circumstances, our environment, or just our story. I support him because he's able to inspire the younger players around Australia just through watching the games and they want to go out to the pitch and make a difference. Like that, gotta be inspiration whether do right rap or do the sports of sports, sports, sports. Going towards my footy game, where we versus Port Melbourne today. I was involved in the Magic Door squad, which is brings in a lot of Sudanese kids that are playing football at the time. Play against teams like Basha Huli squad, Jim Stein squad, all them squads. They just help you develop as a younger kid, see the bigger things um, in the world. I really wanted to play AFL football, which is still my my aspiring dream. And right now, I, all I want to focus on is playing my best footy for Werribee. We really traveled through a hard part of our, of our lives back then. Mum and my older siblings, they all had to walk 1,500 k's uh, to get away from a war. Got settled into a refugee camp kind of thing. From then we came on to migrate into Australia, 2002. Yeah, it's unreal what they went through, really. Family's big to me, like, we all came here together, stick as one stick type. Mum helps a lot with, like, like when we were younger, drives us training to games, like, does all the hard yards. I'd love to be helping the community out and be seen as a mentor myself, try to get up on an AFL list. Then going from there, being an ambassador of the multicultural going around. If every crime every day gets videoed and, and gets broadcasted, there will be a whole city full of crime. That's just how it is. So my solution is show the, show the good, show the positive, show what's different from that and see people actually change their mindset and do the different. role models is really important but it is really hard for the community and for individuals within the community to shine when there are so many people trying to push them down. We speak about multiculturalism in this country. Melbourne is the epitome of multiculturalism in Australia. You know you you, you can you can get on a train and you see 
uh, one in three people is uh, somebody from another country and the respect that is shown, how the multicultural communities are embraced, so really it's, it's the definition of multiculturalism. Everything I'm doing now, I'm not doing it to please anyone, I'm not doing it to, to, to try to put just, you know, a phase on, I'm doing it because I love it, I'm passionate about it. I, I, and I want to make a you know, contribution to the to society. And the best way to do is, you know, is about installing to young people that I can come across with, that I can help, and, and giving them that you know, empowerment that they are you know, they're the next generation. I think so. Yeah.